Oh, I love the way that sounds. <laughs> We're gonna score it out of 10, let you know we think of one of the most sold whiskies in the world. Not a lot going on with it, basically. Whatever they're blending, they're blending a lot of young whiskies in there as well. You can taste it. I like vanilla in a whiskey, but I like other things to be in it as well. This is mostly vanilla. You would assume 50 whiskies is gonna be the most complex thing you've ever drunk. Welcome back to another episode of the Craft Whiskey Boys Quarantine Edition. Keeping it real. Have to keep this without a glove so I can open the bottle. And we do have a little bit of social distancing here going on. We got Alpha with his, his tape. And uh, no one knows if it's the right distance, but we're just going with what Wait, we think works. Wait, what's it supposed works. to be? I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, that's definitely two meters. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we are going to review Crown Royal. We know everybody knows Crown Royal. It's the second best selling whiskey, I believe, in America. It's the number one selling Canadian whiskey in the world. A well-searched whiskey, and we'd like to review it. We think it's a good idea to give this a review. We're going to score it out of 10, let you know what we think of one of the most sold whiskies in the world. Very regal bottle, Jay. It is very regal. Uh, this was, uh, I guess it was designed in 1939 for King George VI, uh, husband to Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth and King George were going to Canada for the very first time that a royal visit had happened in Canada. And on their way over, they decided to make this to commemorate that experience. So, like I say experience, to commemorate that trip. That was the first one, so they're, they're a brand, they don't have their own distillery. That is particularly a, a blend of 50 different whiskies. 50 so different they're a whiskey whiskies. Bonder. That was their first release, and they've done you know, many more since then, like a Rye version, which I think yeah, won, Murray's. Uh, won a Jim Murray's Gold Awards. Um, so yeah, they do, you know, very well known, very well, well selling. Not over in the UK though, I don't think, but in America and Canada, one of the top selling whiskies around. Yeah, I mean, God, all you have to do is you meet a Canadian and they'll be all over the Crown Royal. It's, uh, it's, it's a well drunk drop. I know I've never tried this really neat. I've had it in drinks before. I know it's super sweet and smooth. I don't believe it's sweet from anything other than some of the techniques. It is a whiskey, it's at 40%, so uh, let's try it. Yeah, let me pour away and then we'll begin our deal. I love the way that sounds. It does sound really good. <laughs> All right, so let's get it going. Two minutes, guys. No cuts, no edits. You know the score. Let's bring Alper in and make it official. Crawl roll, baby. Cheers. Touching the tips. Kind of fruity. It's just so, it's really, really high in vanilla. Um, all the way through, it's like a vanilla bomb in a good way. Sorry, Alps, make sure. He's got he's to earn his income somehow, the poor fella. He doesn't get paid, by the way. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's really, to me, it's not massively complex. Um, it's just vanilla and oak in, in a big way. How do they did that with blending 50 whiskies together when you would assume 50 whiskies is gonna be the most complex thing you've ever drunk? But um, this is the first time I've ever had it and the way you described it, I expect it to be a lot sweeter than it is. Yeah, so did I. I didn't, from when I, the last time I had it was so long ago, I was expecting it to be like a syrupy, sweet, easy to drink whiskey. There is some bite to it. It's not like it's just like like this syrupy sweet drink that I thought it would have been. It's actually a decent drink in whiskey. Yeah. Just vanilla all over it really. Yeah. Fruity on the nose, not so much in the palate, but vanilla in the palate. Yeah, and it's, a, a decently long finish as well for it, such a- It does. The only thing I don't like is when it comes down past the palate, the ethanol gives you that bit of a spike and you can tell it's not a spike of, of high ethanol because it's a 40% whiskey, it's a spike of young. So you know whatever they're blending, they're blending a lot of young whiskies in there as well. You can taste it. Um, they've done a bloody good job. I wonder how much, the, what the ratio is of grain to, to what type of barleys and, and malts and cereals are going into this. I have no clue, it's 50 different whiskies, so I don't think anybody It's knows. getting sweeter for me as well, weirdly, weirdly enough. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of mapley sugar as well that's coming in there. Not full maple syrup, like nowhere near that, but uh, there's, a, there's a mapley sugary toasted syrup. Uh, but it's just a lot of like Madagascar vanilla bean. That's like what's coming through. Mm. I took another sneaky taste just after because I liked it. It was okay. Pretty. Not a lot going on with it, basically. Uh, vanilla. I like vanilla in a whiskey, but I like other things to be in it as well. This is mostly vanilla. A little bit of fruit on the nose, but not in the palate. Just more vanilla. Um, a long finish, which is slightly peppery for me. But more vanilla. 
um, but more vanilla. <laughs> it was vanilla on the nose, on the palate, on the finish, all the way through. And actually still getting vanilla in, all, all in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not a great sip in whiskey, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's okay. On ice, I think would go better than neat for this. Uh, just because you want to kill and round out the ice tends to uh, constrict some of the, the esters and proteins, but what it also does is it, much like if you drink a really bad red wine, if you stick it in the fridge, it's kind of easier to drink. Much like a really average white wine, you get it super cold and you can't taste all the complexities in it. So with this, because there's not a lot of complexity and it's just really vanilla all the way through, a bit of ice actually would go well with this bad boy. Uh, I wouldn't rate it as a massive great sip and whiskey, but I would rate it as a decent whiskey. I'm at a 6.1. And that's probably a bit high. I probably 5.9, but I'm going 6.1. I'm going to go below six. The problem for me is, is that the sweetness that I didn't initially taste is now really apparent on the back. On, yeah. yeah, like nearly like and fake sweet. If I carried on drinking that, I would get heartburn. I'd feel sick, genuinely. Yeah, I know so, what you're saying. So I'm rating it a 5.8 because it's okay, and it probably goes great with like vanilla coke or something. <laughs> it actually tastes like a bloody. Van it smells yeah. like a vanilla coke. Yeah. So Alper, what's our score, my friend? Sorry, you missed your scores? How much have you got to do while you're sitting over there? What the fuck? 5.95. 5.95. So that's technically a six, but I feel bad rating this a six whiskey. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel anywhere close to that other one we gave a 6.3 The Canadians are gonna to. hate us, eh? Uh, yeah, I know. But I then again, Canadians, but, but then remember, this is your, for the Canadians watching this, this isn't shitting on this. It's They've got lots of other variations. You know, they're maple and all that. They're all great in cocktails. They're all great on ice and they're easy drinking, much like a, you know, a flavored vodka might be. Um, but it's not like a premium quality, blow your mind off, sipping whiskey by the fire. It's just, it's not that. Some of the other ones that came out, what was that? The Northern Rye, the Northern something edition rye that they brought out. I'd love to try that because I heard that one's like rocket fuel, like in a good way. Uh, but this is just a, a bulk standard whiskey that you would mix with something. You'd put it into cocktails for sure. You would mix it with a Coke, no problem. It's better than like a, a bottom of the range Scotch or Irish. Like it's way better than a Jemison. It's way better than a Johnny Walker. Like, it, you know, it's way above those. I actually would disagree with that. I prefer Jemison. Would you? All day long. Really? Yeah, I could drink way more Jemison. Yeah, because of, of the that. sweetness, because yeah. of the sweetness. But I mean, as a, as a complex whiskey that's got character, it's, I think it's got more than those, personally. What we, That's the beauty of whiskey. So what do you want to give it? Is it I, I, it's a six is what we technically would have to give it. You want to give it a 5.9? No, right? technically we have to call it a six. It's a six, official score. Guys, if you like it, subscribe, comment below. If you think we're out of line and you don't like what we scored it, then please tell us if you've tried it, let us know what you think. If you're Canadian watching this and you're pissed off, we're sorry, it's not a terrible score. We, if you know our scoring system, anything from five upwards is a good whiskey. Anything from five below is like, just leave it alone. And then from five upwards, it just depends on where you're at. If you get into the eights, it's like we would queue overnight to get our hands on that whiskey. If it's a nine, you know it's unheard of. We've never scored a nine. The highest we've ever scored was like an eight point. An 8.3, 8.4. Yep. I believe it Something was 8.3. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was the jet, which was the red breast, 27 year old. 27, yeah. Yeah. So you just we don't score like the wine system. It's on a scale of one to ten, and it's it obviously points in between. Uh, this is a respectable score for a bulk standard, easy to acquire, not expensive whiskey. That's a blend of 50 different whiskies. That's a good bloody score for it. So mm -hmm. subscribe, like, comment, take the piss. Don't take the piss. Cheers. Get pissed. Do, Don't get pissed. Definitely take it. Definitely. Stay safe, people.